So we can see there's quite a lot of uh, scragglies and everything else. Whenever I first met him, he had a mixture of clippered coat, stripped coat, cut coat. Um, half of it was blowing, half of it wasn't. It was just a complete and utter mess, really. It actually took three sessions to get him down to, to pretty much nothing. So it's been a month since I've seen him. So definitely we have some work to do here. A lot of this dead stuff will just pull right out like that. It's always good if you can do a hands-on class in this because to be able to come in and feel the structure of the hair is much easier than standing watching it. Um, this feels very dry actually here. This looks better even. So I mean if you look at that, you can get him to stand up. Oh, put your bum up. Here as well is older stuff that has been cut and stripped. I've been trying to roll and work on this over the last month and a half to basically get some good growth coming through because a lot of this was very, very woolly. Um, a lot of it still is, you can see that, and that's a good indication that that's been cut. And I know that's been cut because this is a pet trim, he's not a show dog. And we generally just tend to, to, to uh, trim the hair on the hawk rather than trying to strip it and cause him pain. I try and do a balance of both so that we still do get some nice colour coming in with the actual real coat as opposed to just this lighter coloured fuzz. And the more lighter coloured fuzz you see on a terrier, the more you know where it's been clippered or scissored. Even thinning shears will do it because as soon as that cut is done on that hair follicle, the trauma goes right through into the root of the hair. So that whole hair is going to come a little differently. The tail, I always try to strip as much as possible and there's lots here to come. See this light stuff? You can just pluck at it. So you can see the long outer hair there. And then we'll get this. But, good way to start, grab your coat king. Especially on your pet trims. And just lightly brush through the coat. It's going to actually pull out a lot of extra stuff. It's a good way to start if you don't have your dogs on as good a schedule as uh, you would like. Always try and get them to come in more often. But look, there's a whole load of muff off already with half a dozen strokes. Um, sometimes you don't feel like you're doing a lot with it until you actually see the results. And that's a lot of medium stuff. Even just feeling the texture of this is quite soft. So there's, there is some undercoat in there. Um, but a lot of this as well, I would be thinking more than anything, is still the dead coat that was clipped. Um, <clears throat> whenever you're trying to bring a coat back that has been clippered, um, it is going to take a while. You can't dictate as to how long it's going to be unless you know the coat and you know the dog well and you know what sort of a cycle that dog is usually on. Um, usually I'd say around a year. That's a good guideline to go with. So all I'm doing here is just taking out some extra stuff and just helping my job be a little bit easier by taking out extra stuff rather than starting plucking at one hair at a time. It's just going to get a lot of the rough out, if you like, at the rough working there. Huh? No pun intended. Good thing these wee guys can't tell me how corny I am. I can hear you groaning on the other end. All the stuff that's sticking up, we want to get rid of it because we want that jacket to be nice and flat and tight. You may have seen some pictures on our Dogs of Pride Facebook page, um, just our general one, not the group, uh, where we had a couple of before and after. This was the guy that I actually took the picture of the before and after on his head where one side was really woolly and the other side was stripped. This is the dog. And uh, I think that was the last trip he was here that we did that one. Um, so, I mean, this is lovely now the way this has come in. He's actually growing in quite fast. You see that the richness is coming through the base of that hair as well. You see that nice golden red that's in there. Whereas before, it would all look like this light, fuzzy fawn colour and just be completely yucky. You can see right here, he's got a couple of 
hairs of that old coat on both sides. And I know that I can just go in there very gently. Oh, except with a broken nail. Never thought about that, did I? But as long as I'm holding that skin as tight as I can, it doesn't pull too much. Now, with a broken nail, it's not easy, so I'm going to get my wee stone in here. <clears throat> You won't be really able to see what I'm doing until I've done it. But you can see that's half of it's gone. I'm going to make sure that you're not pinching the dog's skin or an eyelid or eyelashes. And obviously we're not. He's like, eh, get away from there. But you can see the, the lightness is going away. Okay, let's do a little bit more as we're up here on his face right now. What I'm going to do is just hold that lip, if you like, and my thumb and forefinger. All I'm doing, because of that, is stretching the skin so it's less painful, if it's painful at all. Same thing as whenever you're plucking your eyebrows, you want to stretch that skin so you're just not pulling at the hair and moving the whole skin around. Should be a nice velvet finish to it, so I'm just going to cross the whole ear to start with. But knowing that all of that light, light stuff shouldn't be anywhere near it. Now if I was just rolling this coat, basically this is carding. So whenever you're rolling the coat and trying to get everything in, you can also card. You can do this with a dull 30 or 40 blade, or you can do it with a knife. And that's just pulling that through gently as if it's a comb. And that's your undercoat. That's the very soft wash. And you can see there's different color in that as well. It's not just light. So the dark color is from the real color coming through as well. So that's just undercoat. And the more undercoat you get out as well, the, the flatter that that will lay. But we know, again, go up here, we've got a lot of coat on the outer. So if you work through the coat you can stop at the top, start at the top, start at the bottom, wherever you want. Biggest thing is is to keep moving and um, move it all together. If you start in one area you can end up with a big hole and then you're trying to blend it out forever. Um, if you do little bits as well to see what is pulling and you realize okay well I'm gonna get a certain length out of this that's fine. If this is all going to pull to right short and tight around the neck, as it kind of should be down around the throat anyway, then we'll go for it. If not, we're not going to force it. We can't. It's not going to come. It's not going to come. I mean, as I said earlier, that feels really good condition right now that it feels like it's still growing. It's healthy hair. Um, it's just got lots of it. So, strip. Hold that skin tight. Pull it up. You can see even at the side what's sticking out. You can even just pull those if you want to go through. I know some people that apparently hand strip with nothing but a finger and a thumb. That's fine if you're sitting on the TV with the, the popcorn in the other hand. But for in certain circumstances of commercial grooming, we don't have that luxury of just pulling one at a time. So I'm just moving around and I'm looking to see what I'm getting. Now this is all a lot of top coat. As you've seen whenever we carded it, it was all soft, wussy undercoat. Obviously there's a little bit in there, but most of this is the longer coat. Anyway, we haven't even got close to talking about pattern setting or anything else yet. I have a couple of little um, borders, so we'll be able to do a couple of different shoots with the other ones as well. And just to even compare the coat. And this guy's male and neutered, and he's a big guy. Um, see, the other two that I get are not as big, and the male that I get that's not neutered um, is about half his size and looks like a puppy, and he's actually quite a bit older. Just working through, and you can see there's quite a bit that's coming off him already, and it still doesn't look like I've done anything. 
Um, that's the thing with hand stripping. Sometimes you won't realise you've done anything until you stand back at the end. Or the good thing to do is take a before picture. Can you see that the darkness is coming up a little bit? This dark coloration is coming through. So my aim is to enhance this dog's colour today. And all I'm doing is looking for all that light coloured hair and I'm zoning in. What I'll do, I'll just do a couple of minutes here and then let you see a finished result. You can see all the hair coming off here. And that's that outer dead stuff. So can you see how this colour is coming in nicely? All that light stuff's disappearing. A couple little bits and pieces. You can actually individually see the hairs. But compared to what it looked like, which was more like this, or even looking at the other side, you can do a side to side comparison and that's definitely easier to see the difference. Can you see that? It doesn't take much. Oh, another thing I should actually mention as well. If you have strange directional growth, if you actually strip the hair in the direction that you want it to grow in, that's how it's going to grow. I could cause curlix in this over a period of time if I was actually stripping this the wrong way. Okay, so even though this is a pet room, um, the owner really wants him to be more correct than just clipping the legs and trimming them. So it's not going to be perfect because we have to keep working on it each time. But here's a, a before and an after just showing whenever that hair comes out. I'm not going to go hell for leather. I know there's little bits you can see here and there, but uh, I mean, I'm working for the comfort of him as well. So I'm not going to push it beyond it. It's still, there's a considerable difference and there's more I'll work on a little bit and uh, keep working on it. And we'll, we'll eventually get there where it is nice. And you can see that richness of color coming through. That's the nice thing. And what I noticed as well, now that they're coming through, some nice little freckles and stuff here and there. You can see just different coloration in the coat. And it's just kind of nice, little darker hairs here and there. Uh, it's always fun to sort of reveal those after a, a clear sort of a fawn fuzzy coating that's been there for so long. We also get a, a nice response from the owner when they come back to pick up the animal and they go, oh, look at the colour. And just think you've re dyed the dog or something. I'll just show you quickly as well another way to use your stone, which is really nice. You can do it at the end or whenever you finish a section and want to move on. Or you can just use it almost like a comb, but just actually stroke it over the, the actual coat. And that's actually going to take off any sort of sharp ends of hair. And look, see? It brings off that fuzz. So it actually does help you as well. So there's lots of different ways to use your tools. And that's it, is a little bit of experimental as well. And... Um, it's always fun to find a new way and something that actually works and does something because like all that soft fuzz that I couldn't grab so it's even made it even richer. I can see a lot more dark coloration through there than there was before so yeah always have fun doing this. Sometimes it's easier just to put them into a wee belly strap with that third hand that you don't have just to hold them up if you're trying to hold skin tight to make it more comfortable for him, you can't hold him up at the same time when he wants to sit down. And this little man likes to sit down. And again, use this as a comb. I'm going to take a lot of that extra stuff down a little bit. Just smooth it. Because he's almost at the end of his tether today. All 
right, we've done about as much as we want to do on, on this little guy today. Um, we're just going to do a little bit of a finish off. Just something to help. I mean, his skin's lovely. His coat is great. A lot more of that dead stuff has come out. And we're getting such beautiful colour coming through. Um, all we did to thin that neck hair down a little bit was went through it a little bit more with the coat king. This, because it's been constantly clippered, is so fuzzy, we're not going to pull it off. We did get a little bit right to the leather. Um, beyond that, we're just going to keep working on that. Yeah, he's, he's bored. He wants to go. He wants some more cookies and to run and skip and jump. So, we're going to use uh, our Pure Cause Show Shine Terrier Touch Show Shine Spray. Um, just to polish the coat. Um, to seal that cuticle a little bit and to nourish the skin. And we also have our boar bristle brush, which we showed you earlier on. All right, little dude. Now this stuff a lot, little goes a long, long way. So I never spray directly into a coat, no matter what you're using, because then you're just going to concentrate it in that area. So always spray above and let it fall. And then just with your brush, you just want to polish that in. And work it in. Now you'll see we will have a couple of other little borders coming. We have one with a darker jacket and you'll see the shine that it comes up with whenever we use that on the darker coats. But it's a nice scent to it without being too flowery or too overpowering. And this also helps to get rid of a little bit more dead skin. And just really polishes the coat. So you can see there's a nice sort of sleek finish on him. I'll do the other side and then he's off home. Thanks for joining us. Again, this was Wendy at Dogs of Pride. You can find us online, dogsofpride.com. And this was our Border Terrier, our little superstar for the morning. Take care.